Welcome to week two. Because you will be using the same topic for the next two speeches, choosing your topic can seem like a daunting task. But I hope to make you feel better in this presentation by dispelling a huge myth that you might be worried about. There is no such thing as a perfect topic. Wait, I'm going to say it again so that you can um, really let it sink in because it's such an important idea. There's no such thing as a perfect topic. Or, to say it another way, any topic could be the perfect topic. The trick? Choosing a topic that matters to you. If you choose a topic that matters to you, doing the research for your speech, writing your speech outline, revising your speech, and even delivering your speech will all be enjoyable tasks. As I discussed in the week one presentation, if you enjoy your topic, if it matters to you, then you can significantly reduce the communication apprehension you feel heading into the speech process. This presentation is going to take the mystery out of choosing your topic by covering three main areas, the problems of invention, the idea of social and cultural diversity, and how to narrow your topic for your specific speaking situation. First, I would like you to focus on the problems of invention. Well, you might be asking yourself, what's invention? It's something that rhetoricians since the ancient Romans have been discussing. In fact, according to the great Roman scholars who borrowed many of their ideas from the ancient Greeks that we talked about last week, invention was the first canon of the lost art of great oratory. The other canons, arrangement, style, memory, and delivery, we'll be discussing as the term progresses. Although because we live in a written culture as opposed to an oral one, the canon of memory has slowly fallen by the wayside. Today, most speakers speak from a set of prepared notes. In this class, for instance, you will speak from a keyword outline. Invention is the process of discovering and framing your topic. And it's something sp speakers from Cicero to Socrates to Martin Luther King have grappled with. Invention is topic selection. According to your textbook, there are several characteristics of a good topic. A good topic involves you, meaning it makes you feel enthusiastic and it engages your interests. A good topic also involves your listeners. Think about the audience that you would like to deliver your speech to. And think about the classroom audience who will watch your speech and critique it. A good topic is one that will appeal to those important listeners. A good topic is one that you can manage. This means it's not too broad, so you can fit your speech into the assigned time limit. A good topic is also not too narrow, meaning you have enough information to talk about in the allotted time. For this class, your informative speech should be about five minutes long, and your persuasive speech can be between five and seven minutes long. So there are some steps you can take to find a topic that meets all of those criteria. Not surprisingly, all of these steps start with you. You can try brainstorming. To do this, start a broad list and ask yourself, what's a topic I would like to investigate for the rest of the term? Write down the very first idea that comes into your head. Then, write down at least six more ideas that occur to you. It's important that you write down anything that comes into your mind without judging your ideas. Don't reflect, reflect critically on them until you have generated a whole list. When you have a list, Take a minute and read over it. See if there are any connections between ideas that you listed. See if any of the items on your list sounds particularly good or particularly interesting. Maybe none of the items on your list becomes a topic on its own, but maybe by reading the whole list together, you arrive at the perfect topic. Another way to come up with a good topic is to make an interest chart. Ask yourself the following questions. What things do you find interesting? What places do you find interesting? What people do you find interesting? What activities do you enjoy? What ideas do you find intriguing? What events are foremost in your life? What values are important to you? Come up with at least five answers for each question. And again, don't judge your ideas. The important thing is to get them flowing on paper. After you have made a large chart, compare your answers across categories and see what connections you can draw. Once you have a general topic area, you can use a mind map to refine your topic. Let's say you are very interested, after looking at your interest chart, in the city of New Orleans. To make a mind map, put New Orleans in a circle in the center of your page and write down a cluster of topics that relate to that idea, like Mardi Gras or 
Creole culture, or life on the bayou, or Hurricane Katrina. If your mind map is specific enough, you can return to it when you get ready to craft your main points. For this course, we are adding two small layers of complexity to the notion of topic selection. Not only should you choose a good topic that interests you and fits the interests of your listeners, but this topic needs to do two other things. First of all, it needs to be a good fit for both an informative and a persuasive speech. Second, it needs to include elements of social and cultural diversity. You're probably asking yourself what this means. Well, simply put, your speech needs to reflect the notion that people are different. We have different races, different genders, different ethnicities, different religions, different socioeconomic statuses, etc. Your speech needs to reflect and celebrate this kind of diversity. Instead of assuming that everyone is exactly like you, make an effort to understand and include people from other cultures or social situations. You can bring an awareness of social and cultural diversity to any topic you choose. As your textbook suggests, the third step in topic selection is narrowing your topic. When you refine or narrow your topic, the first thing you should do is consider the general purpose of your speech. Are you persuading your audience? If so, the general purpose of the speech is to persuade. Are you informing them? Then your general purpose is to inform. Next, you need to determine the specific purpose statement. This purpose narrows your topic, provides a focus for research, and is stated as a single infinitive phrase or sentence. Uh, let's say I'm giving an informative speech about buying a home. My general purpose is to inform. My specific purpose is to inform my audience about how to responsibly buy a home. If I wanted to change that topic a bit to fit the perimeters of a persuasive speech, my general purpose would change too. It would be to persuade. A specific purpose could be to persuade my audience to make a substantial down payment on a house when buying a home. Let's say I've chosen the topic of student loans. A, a specific purpose would be... Um, to inform my audience how to apply for student loans, and a persuasive per specific purpose statement might be something like to persuade my audience that the federal government should offer student loan forgiveness to public servants. As you select your topics for upcoming speeches, you will start by brainstorming and choosing a topic that reflects your interests and abilities. Next, you will make sure that topic can work for an informative or persuasive speech and that you can draw attention to issues of social and cultural diversity. Finally, you will narrow your topic and develop a specific purpose statement.